As dads, some days we feel like we have all the answers, and some days we feel like we don't have a clue. If that describes you, you're at the right place. This is the All Pro Dad Podcast. And speaking of All Pro Dads, I'm here today with a group of dads, and we consider ourselves just right above average. Yep, that far. But we're trying. And we try to tap into people that are smarter than us to help us figure this stuff out. And so mm-hmm. thank you for joining us. We think it says a lot about you that you want to try as well. And each week we ask a question, just one question, because that's all we can handle. Yep. We'll ask one question that a dad's maybe wrestling with or hadn't even thought to wrestle with yet mm-hmm. until they hear the podcast. I know that's been the case for me a couple of times. Uh, and then we give you one pro move. The question of the day is, what are seven things a daughter needs from her dad. Seven mm. things. That's a lot That's of things. Yeah. But, and the reason yeah. we did this, it was a uh, chose this topic. It was a very, very popular post on allprodad.com. Yeah, and important thing to note is these are not like clothes, food, right. a house. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. get like the basic human needs. We're talking about relational things, emotional things, social yeah. things that they really need to support and grow. Absolutely. Yeah. But before we dive in, into that, what is it about being a girl dad that's kind of surprised you or you say hey this is a little bit different than it is with my son i have to remember what's something maybe that's taking you off guard well i will say it's very different raising the, the way i feel about my daughter um and the way i feel about my son and i found that very interesting when when my daughter uh came along she was our first mm-hmm. and i found like i was i was kind of three months into this thing mm. and not really emotionally connected yet yeah. and i was just i thought i was terrible like i thought i was the mm. worst dad and i went to one of my buddies uh and i was he has he had two kids i think at this point he has five now which scares me <laughs> that's on but, him that's yeah that's his fault <laughs> yeah, but but, but I, I was just like man i i gotta be honest i gotta I got to tell you something. I, I don't. Know, I don't know what this says about me, but I am not connected with my daughter yet. Mm. And he. He just. He literally laughed out loud. He's like, "Oh, that's completely normal." I'm like, "What? Right. Nobody says this. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. What, how does no? Why does nobody tell you that it takes you a minute? It takes some people. Mm. Some people just connect right off the bat. Uh-huh. Um, but for me, it was just like I was like, I'm not feeling it. I thought I would feel it at this point. Yeah. But but ever like. But about six months in is when it really hit me. Um, the first time, like she looked at me and like really smiled at me and recognized me, I was like, "Oh, it's over." And, and, I'm, d- and, and I'm done. And and here's my wallet and my soul. I'm not afraid to say it now or ashamed to say it now. But like I, when we first found out we were having uh, a child, it was our daughter's our oldest. Uh, we found out she's gonna be a girl. And I looked at my wife, I'm like, what the heck am I going to do? I have no idea what I'm going to do with a daughter. Uh, I was like, we're going to throw the baseball, we're going to do this. I was like, oh, it's going to be cool, I have a son. And it was daughter first, and it was such a blessing to me because um, it it changes you. Uh, You know, I was... I was like athlete guy, play sports guy, you know, competitive guy. And my daughter comes along and she doesn't like sports. She doesn't care about competition. At all. She just doesn't care about any of that. She's very much into music and drawing and reading and all that sort of stuff. And I had to kind of embrace that. As she grew, I had to grow with her. Yeah. Mm. And I had to kind of get interested in what she was interested in. And if it was uh, the other way around, it had been a little boy first, I'd been like, woo, let's buy a baseball bat for the crib. You know, like I, right. I would have been like right in my comfort zone. But I think getting out of your comfort zone, uh, that's what happened to me with a daughter. And that was a really good thing for me as yeah. a man. What about yeah. you, Reggie? So, um, you know, funny story. When we found out we were having a girl, um, we went to see a movie called Inside Out. I took all of oh, my yeah. other yeah, yeah, nieces yeah. and nephews and on my, my wife's side. And there's a point in the movie where the little girl is just struggling. If you've just seen the movie, it's, a, it's an amazing movie. Uh, she's struggling because she misses home. Mm-hmm. And she starts to cry because she's tried to run away and mm-hmm. everything. And I just couldn't help but think about my daughter, who wasn't born yet, and who was like all of like six months in the womb. And I started crying in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. And it, mm. so, so what I realized is having a daughter just made me um, naturally tap into these emotions that I'm like, where, what are these? Like, yeah. Why am I crying? <laughs> yeah, like, where, what? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> shake it off. Somebody <laughs> punch me. You know, and, and uh, that's what I have learned, like, time and time. She's mm. seven now. She'll be eight, which is like, it just flew by. Mm. But uh, the emotions piece uh, is what she has taught me. So I think uh, girls <clears throat> are, are different. Uh, the first one um, was she needs you to be involved. My um, 
daughter, is, she's in gymnastics, loves it. She was like self-taught until we finally got her into it. She was just watch videos and everything, so she loves it. My son, flag football. I played football growing up. I wasn't a gymnast. Yeah. So I, what she uh, showed me as far as what, uh, the involvement that we need is I was at every practice, practice of his. I was at every game. Hmm. Now she goes into the gymnastics season, and I missed the, I missed the first. I missed hmm. the first practice of hers. She came home, and she was like, why weren't you there for me? Mm. Oh, and I was like... And she noticed. She was like, "You go to everything for Noah. You didn't come to this for me." Did it? And it just didn't click oh, for you, dude. dude. It, like, it, it, it was ouch. like I didn't intentionally right, do it. Right, yes, it didn't right. click. It was just like this is something your mom's taking you I to. I thought, yeah, I, and yeah. like even talking about it now is like it makes me sad because I was like mm. I dropped the ball on for something sure. that was yeah. so important for my daughter, mm. and in that like from there on out i went to every single one mm. and what i realized though is that i was one of probably like out of out of probably you know you're like 20 gymnasts there practicing and everything mm. probably two three dads and so then it made me think of like wow how many mm. uh, of these other daughters are feeling the same way uh, reggie i think that's something I'm, i've never thought about before is are there categories of things that we're not involved in because we think mom's taking For them sure. i've never thought about that yeah I've never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and Reggie and I know this well because we we both work for the chapter program that helps dads and kids connect at school. Mm -hmm. And this is something where da this is a place where dads are nowhere to be found. Yep. And it's not because they don't mm -hmm. care. It's be it's because of the assumption that mm -hmm. mom's going to take care of it. And that's how it's been for a very long time. And so we're on this mission to try to get dads involved with kids at their school because they need to be involved. They yeah. need to know what's going on, whether they're in the household or not. Mm. They need need to be in tune mm -hmm. and in touch with what's going on at their kid's school. Mm -hmm. I helped do some curriculum for All Pro Dad a couple of months ago. It was an initiative we were putting together a childhood safety series and a childhood development series. And so we did 10 different videos for each and they covered all sorts of topics. But one of the things that we examined and researched developmentally, toddlers, when, you know, and you've all had toddlers, when they come up to you and say, Daddy, watch, Daddy, watch, Daddy, watch. Oh. I'm going to roll the car. Watch, I'm going to do a jump. Watch, it doesn't matter what they're doing. It's watch me, watch me. What mm. they're really saying is, do I matter to you? Mm. Yeah. And wow. as they get older, <clears throat> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even into teenage years, they're not going to say, watch me anymore, mm. but they still want to know, do I matter to you? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the same thing as when you didn't show up that day. What it told her was, oh, this doesn't matter to Daddy yeah. the way football dad mm, matters yeah. to Daddy. And that has to be a dagger to that. And yeah, it's, I'm not picking on you, that because we've all done those sort oh, of things. For sure. I know yeah. I've done those sort of things. Yeah. But that's really what it conveys to kids is not... Daddy doesn't like gymnastics. His daddy doesn't like me. Right. Yeah. And, and that hurts. And to the involvement, it's like showing up wasn't enough, and I realized that. So just like I would do with Noah and practice like juke moves or like mm -hmm. how to pull flags and things like that, Oof. I started like doing things with her as far as the right. gymnastic goes to let her know I am involved. I'm not just present, I, but I. Could am you show us? Yeah, I was about to say. Let's get a pommel <laughs> horse in here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Do a back bend. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. This table yeah. could be. A good pump. Cartwheel. <laughs> Cartwheel. <laughs> that. All right, Bobby. What about you, though? Is there something your daughter wants you to be involved in, or? Mm, you know, my daughter. She likes music. In fact, we have this beautiful piano at our house that used to belong to my grandparents. And uh, when I was younger, I, I never took the time to learn how to do piano. My my grandmother, uh, my grandfather, both played and taught piano lessons. I just wasn't interested. Mm -hmm. I played sports. I just didn't care about music. We inherited this piano, and I'm so glad we did because now she wants to play piano. And it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to me because even as a child not caring, as an adult, now that I watch my child care, mm -hmm. I just love listening to her play it. Yeah. And I can like close my eyes and picture, oh, this is, it's just like my grandpa playing. Like he played the wow. same piano in the same room and the same thing. It was just so cool. And so I actively ask her to play me a song. Mm -hmm. I've heard the songs all over. She plays and practices all the time. And they're they're not like Bach or Beethoven. It's mm. we're playing the Little Mermaid or something. You know, like we're we're <laughs> right. learning little, you know, smaller songs. But it's like, hey, um, the simple act of, hey, can you play me a song? Mm -hmm. You should see her eyes. Oh, yeah. mm. Light up. Yes, you I can go. play you, you go, a song. There it is. Ding ding ding. Yeah. There's what is what's for her. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jason? What is your daughter like if you be involved? Oh, she's in? she's in music too. Mm -hmm. And I played music growing up. I, I played the drums, so I was in uh, marching corps and I was in symphonic. Um, but I played sports too. I played soccer, football, and baseball. And so um, I was I never expected her to 
you know, be an athlete or, or do mm-hmm. athletics. Um, and I wasn't sure what she was going to be into. She told us at four years old she wanted to play the violin. Mm-hmm. And wow. we were like, four? Wow. four? four? Like, yeah. come on, do you, do you really? <laughs> you don't don't do you, how do you know what a violin is? <laughs> right. Spell violin. <laughs> Who told you about the yeah. violin? Mm-hmm. And so we put her in violin lessons, and now she's in the, the Tampa Youth Metropolitan Orchestra. Wow. It's like... Cool. How, how did it develop? Like, she, and, and she At just, 12. and she, wow. she just really loved it and wanted to do it. And luckily for me, and and this is not the case for every dad, but she she loved something that I enjoyed too. So it was easy for me. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of times, like for you, you you were the athlete. Yeah. If your kid doesn't like sports, like I was an athlete growing up too. I wasn't a great athlete, but. My son doesn't love sports. He loves building stuff. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, he like he told he said this today, this morning actually. He said, you know what the best thing about building this is? Guess what he said? Knocking, knocking it down. It down <laughs> knocking yeah. it down. Yeah. 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 I'm like, so what does that mean? I don't know. But, yeah. And you fully understood. <clears throat> oh yeah, I was like, that heck yeah, yeah, blow it up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. move it on. All right. She needs to uh she needs you to demonstrate a healthy marriage. Mm-hmm. Okay. We need to acknowledge that all our dads listening right now, they're not, they're not, may not be married. So we want to acknowledge that this would be. And we pulled these points from the article. So that's, that's where this came from. But yeah, not every dad that's going to listen is married. Yeah. If, if you are married, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Why does uh, our daughters need to see us demonstrate a healthy marriage? Oh, I mean, you could unpack that for days, I feel like. But I mean, at the end of, at the end of the day, you want someone to love your daughter just how she was made to be, mm. not how they want to shape her mm. into somebody that fits their box, right? And so for me, I, I just, I have to think about that really hard mm. when me and my wife are disagreeing on things. And so how am I going to love her in that moment mm. or not love her is going to actually show my daughter how she should expect mm-hmm almost to be treated in that relationship. And so I don't want her to ever expect somebody to um, love her for other than who she is. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I think all of us at some point can think back to something that's happened when we were kids and said, my dad did this, so I'm never going to do that. Or my mom did this, so I'm never going to do I'm not going to be that kind of dad or that parent. Or just look at people around you. But I think our own families kind of give us the examples. And I think for this particular point, this question, your daughter uh, needs to see you demonstrate a healthy marriage because then she'll expect that for herself. Yeah. The lower you set the bar... Mm-hmm. Yeah the less likely is to, she's going to try to achieve higher than the bar. So the higher we raise the bar in That's our relationships, good. the higher she's going to seek that bar mm-hmm. when she gets older. So if I'm constantly belittling my wife in front of her, she's going to think that's normal. Yeah. Right. And so when and she you, goes yeah. on to date or she goes on to go in relationships, if she's starting to get belittled, she'll be like, well, this is how dad did. I this guess is this, is normal. Well, this is normal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I treat my wife as the most important person on the planet, relationally, physically, mentally, emotionally, in every way, she'll be like, well, dang, I can't settle for any less than that. And that's what I want. That's the expectation. I want her to think that she should deserve to be treated with the utmost respect because that's what was modeled for her. Mm -hmm. Fun is, is, needs to be there. And I I can be very serious uh, because, you know, when you're focused and you're, you got things to do, you know, for the family, you got things to do for for work, you got things to do, Mm -hmm. you know, you're like, I'm focused, but I want to model fun. Uh, for my daughter, uh, because I want her to to have a husband that she can always have fun with, yep. and then also um, and uh, also affection. Um, I know there's like you, you, it can be hard sometimes. I've heard dad say, you know, it's hard because you know it's my baby girl, so I'm not as affectionate with her. But I'm like, she needs to know what that love yeah. is, mm, and agreed. and see it modeled again if you're married. Yeah. See it with your spouse. And then also see it with her. She loves my kisses, and she's seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but there'll be a day where it's like maybe I have to kiss her less, right? Because mm-hmm. she's like, yeah, it's a little, yeah. you know. But at least she won't be like, oh, you know, this is just this is crazy. So then her husband yeah. to be can't be affectionate well, with her. Or she doesn't. My know how kids, to if you it. if you ask any of my kids privately, you pull them aside and said, "How often do mommy and daddy kiss?" They'd be like, "Oh, darn day!" <laughs> like, and, and I and I want that to be like. 
I don't want to like hide if I ever want to kiss my wife, like go around the corner so they don't see it. I'm like, hey, yeah, I love yeah. your mom and I'm going to give her a kiss right here in the kitchen. It's She's yeah. making scrambled my, eggs. I you think you're my, Yeah. <laughs> my, my son is it's one of his favorite things when, yeah. when yeah. Stacy kiss. He's like, he'll, he'll actually come up to us. Like we'll be in the kitchen together. We'll be talking. We'll be like close to each other. And he'll be like, hey, kiss lip, click, kiss lip to lip. Kiss, do it. Do it. <laughs> yes. Let's yes. go. That's right. Oh. Well, it's so healthy for our kids to see us putting our marriage even ahead of them. Yeah. And yeah. that's something oh, for pe- sure. People like I'll do marriage retreats and I'll talk to couples after and they say, yeah, this is the first time we've gotten away since, you know, mm-hmm. our first was born. Well, how old are they? 37. I mean, you're going, <laughs> oh, you go, yeah, well, it'll just be forever. And yeah. so that's, of course, a ridiculous thing. But sometimes it's been eight, nine, 10 mm-hmm. years where they just, we don't get out. He's going, Hey, you've got to make time to yeah, prioritize yeah. your well, marriage. Well, I, I got two stats that I, I know are going to blow your mind here because uh, I looked this up. This is from Divorce and Family Law website. The rates of divorce have gone down, but it says if your parents are happily married, your risk, your child, your risk of divorce is decreased by 14%. Wow. Just if they see a happy marriage in the wow. home. Wow. And then this one also is incredible. Certain studies that were cited said that daughters of divorced parents have a 60% higher divorce rate themselves. Mm-hmm. Double the double that of sons. So it affects oh, daughters wow. way more wow. than sons. It's only thirty five percent for sons. So if you are not demonstrating a healthy marriage in your life, your daughter is then going to heap the brunt of that more so yeah. than your son will. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I wanted to add to the what to demonstrate is the apology. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Like my kids see mom and dad have disagreements, yeah. right? And when they see that, right, I always I put it on myself like I have to go and apologize. And if my kids can see, if my daughter can see um, us argue, she can see me apologize. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. What's number three, Ted? Number three is she needs you to support her. I think we can kind of, I think we talked about that. Yes. Uh, I think too, uh, you know, not just in what they do, but also how they feel, Mm, supporting them on how they feel. Because sometimes, you know, kids can be completely irrational just like adults, yeah, but the, the cognitive ability that they have is so much lower than what adults, and they, mm. they fear things or think about things in a certain way that makes no logical sense. But mm. if you tell them, oh, that's, that's ridiculous, like you, sh- you shouldn't yeah. feel that way without giving them some context of like why you shouldn't feel that way or why, why you know, getting to the bottom of why that makes them nervous or scared or fill in the blank yeah. um, or sad, you know, if you don't get to that, and you're not supporting mm. them, you know, from an emotional standpoint either. You know, just like their wives want empathy. I don't want you to fix it. I want you to feel this. Yeah. 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 With my daughter, I mean, it was such a different. I jump into it vice mode. It is the way I'm wired. And she just don't fix me. Like yeah. just, and my yeah. wife's looking at me and like, she gives me the, you know, signaling from second base, you know, or the, you know from home plate. No, can no, I, can no, I okay. reference the nail in the head video? Oh, oh, it's, so oh my, it's so good. Google the nail in the head video, it's guys. So you'll, you'll be glad you did. We need to support her. Okay. Oh. <laughs> she needs to trust you as a confidant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She sure. needs to trust you as a confidant. Mm-hmm. Well, here's, here's why. Uh, and I think about this now. My daughter's 12. So you've gone through this. We're going through this right now. Right. 12 years old. You're not far away from it. At 12 that, years that old. That sounded scary. Yeah, you just, not far hey, away from hey, it. You're like a half an hour away from her being 12, man. So they're on the, the doorstep of teenager, middle school. Everything is super emotionally charged. Like everything is the either the end of the world or the greatest thing that's ever happened. So and true. they have all this desire and need to share information about themselves, about what they're going through, about what they're learning. So they're going to tell somebody. Yeah. It better be me. Yeah. I want to yeah. be involved yeah. in it. And because I don't want them to think, well, dad won't care. So I'm not going to bother telling him this very important thing about what this boy told me at school right. or whatever. Right. Yes. I, I want them to feel like they can tell me something in safety yep. and it's not going to leave. I'm it, not going to go spread it around. And they will tell you when you don't fix them. I mean, I'm sending her off to college in three weeks. Just go, I wish I'd have known this sooner. So, man, it's yes. I They're going to tell come to somebody. Me. Someone's going to get yeah. the well, information. Have, as they yep, grow you know. up, they have more influences, right? When right. they're little, you're about it. You're yeah. But as, as they get off, you know, and get older and start doing and uh, being involved in more things, more people are going to be speaking mm-hmm. into their yeah. life. Mm-hmm. Yep. That they'll and trust. That they'll trust yeah. more yeah. than you, yeah. actually, if you haven't done. And the peers have just as much, if not more, influence at a certain yeah. age. Yep. You know, so I wanted to know from an early age that I'm trustworthy. Yeah. Yes. You know? That's good. She needs your unconditional love. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
because they're gonna just like our sons they're gonna disappoint right they're gonna yeah. and they're gonna be frustrating and they're gonna fight with their brothers and sisters so how yeah. do we show them unconditional love Reggie what do you think with the unconditional love um I, I think it is going back to being a safe space for her mm. um where you know like and I I really I really just want to hit on like <laughs> As, as what I'm learning and what I'm sure dads go through is like they have this great divide because it's it's male and female, right? And it's like, how can I possibly empathize with you? You're a little girl. You're then, you know, a teenager. You're then a woman. But I think to break that down and to like get rid of that and, and be like, ex accept that, you know, accept her emotions, mm -hmm. accept who she is, who God created her to be in our house what we believe yeah who god if god created my daughter grace to be very like she moves with a ton of grace mm -hmm. right but she also moves with a ton of fire <laughs> so um where we're always like grace like that's not you know I, I catch myself i'm like you know when when she does something new or she's bold about something i'm like grace like you gotta calm down you gotta chill but that's not unconditional like yeah. i'm putting yeah. her back in that box that you talked yeah. about that her soon not soon her husband one day will do right and she'll be like yeah. well that's what my dad did that's what i'm going to accept yeah. and i can't put her in that box well, i want to i think yeah, when, when they disappoint too it it's all i mean it's, it's so practical but just to say you know in that moment they 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 often know when they've disappointed you mm -hmm. it, it's just to remind them like hey I, I don't like your actions, but I still love you. That's a phrase that we use at our house is like, I, I, I'm disappointed in the choices you made, but it has no effect on how much I love you. Yeah. And, and I think that's important too, because so many of young girls' relationships are conditional. Like, I'm your friend if you yeah. believe the thing, same things that I believe, and if you say and wear the same things I wear, and if you're in the same club, I'm. it's all conditional. And when those yeah. things change, we're not friends anymore, right? Yeah, so so if Go to a different school. Yeah. You, oh, you go we're, to a different we're, school now. We're, oh, we <laughs> were friends when you're on the softball team, but when you quit, oh, I'm only friends with the softball player. I'm, we're not friends anymore, yeah, or whatever. And it can be petty, silly things. So if almost... I'm not going to say all, but many of their other young relationships are conditional. Mm -hmm. They need to know that ours is not. Oh, yeah. that's good. I you didn't know? think about yeah. that. That's so true. Number six, she needs a strong spiritual leader. Absolutely. I'm an elder in our church, and so I'm, I'm always reading different spiritual um, you know, content and things just to kind of keep up with trends. And there was a poll done that said 40% of Gen Z believes Jesus sinned. I was like, oh. Hold up now. Like, that's like the whole point of Jesus. Right. He didn't sin. That's the whole point of like Christianity. And I was thinking two out of five Gen Zers don't believe like the core tenet of this specific faith. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind. So that's either because nobody taught them the right. core tenets of the faith or they're getting influences from somewhere else besides who's supposed to be a spiritual leader in their home. For sure, to, to model uh, what that looks like, right? Reading in our house, reading our, our Bibles, um, praying, worshiping together, yeah. um, where she can see that being modeled in a family aspect and right. dynamic. I try to keep that uh, in, in sight. Right. So then whatever I'm doing from all these, you know, from the seven from the seven statements here, like it's like, OK, how is her husband one day going to be? Mm. And what is she going to look for? Yeah. You know, uh, is she looking for a strong spiritual leader? Well, yeah. let me be a strong. I can't say, yeah, yeah go find a strong spiritual leader. And not and be not one. one. What's yeah. that look like? <laughs> She's going to yeah. be confused. Well, and two, it's it's where you find um, your foundation too, right? Number seven, she needs a positive role model. Mm -hmm. I hope that when my kids are asked 20, 30 years from now, what was your dad like? Mm -hmm. uh, I hope that they say a number of things, but one thing I hope they say is that he gave everything his all. And mm -hmm. if I am consistently trying to do that myself with work, mm -hmm. with relationships, with even hobbies, like everything, yeah. then they'll say, well, I guess I should at least give my all or at least give close to my all and, and right. just try to strive in that way. Um, hopefully uh, they'll, that'll rub off that hard work, that work ethic, yeah. that just yeah. desire to do well at whatever you're doing will become something that they can see as a positive thing uh, and mimic that. Yeah, it's good. Thinking of positive role model, you could go so many different directions. Um, I, th I think I, I originally think about character. They have good, solid character, meaning mm. 
they loved me well. They loved others well. They treated others with kindness. Um, they, they encouraged others. They used their words wisely. I mean, all these different angles that you could go. But I think it comes down to, to having a strong uh, character and um, being intentional. I think a lot of the what we talk about in this podcast kind of comes down to you making the choice mm-hmm. to intentionally engage with your children, mm-hmm. um, whether it's, you know, whether it's in what they do or how they feel, it's mm-hmm. all about being an, an intentional dad. Yeah. Right. And so to be a positive role model, you have to, you have to be intentional and you have to, uh, you know, be, uh, looking inside yourself to say, am I modeling Mm-hmm. what I hope mm-hmm. my kids will uh, reflect in the future. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's like, because you can't check all the boxes. Right. And, and I mean, if you strive to do that, yeah, you, it, you, I think right. you just tire yourself out and right. not have the grace that you could have for yourself. But, yeah, that positive role model, it's the end game. It's, you know, what are they going to say about me, all my children, you know? And, and since I know I'm not going to ever be perfect, uh, the perfect father in their lives, that they know that I tried my best, mm-hmm. that I um, apologized, right? right? Like, you know, and didn't wait years later. <laughs> yeah. After yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry you're right. going through that. I should have. No, it's like I apologize yeah. in the moment. Like when I missed mm. her practice for gymnastics, mm. apologized, changed it. Mm. And so I think it's, you know, to say the, to know that dad was real. Yeah. You know, yeah. he was a real individual and he tried his best. Well, you said not perfect. And that it reminded me of something that happened just last week because I screwed up in front of my kids. Uh, and I, it wasn't like the worst thing in the world, but I, I'm just not a yeller. I don't mm-hmm. yell and I don't yell at anybody. Uh, and we were out getting some dessert with the kids. They wanted to go out. So we went to this little place down the street. And my kids, you know, they're they're young, they're they're impressionable, they're little. The little one is three, like she's real real small. And so we're walking with the ice cream back to the car, and there's some teenagers here, and they are they are cursing in a way that would make a sailor blush. Like mm-hmm. it is, it's rough and it's loud. And it's like nighttime, and they have no regard for my kids who are just walking right by. And I just turned and I just yelled at them, mm-hmm. and I realized that wasn't really necessary. Like I could have just ushered you into the car. And we could have driven home, but I like gave it to these kids. Yeah. And then the next day I was talking to my kids. I'm like, what was that like? You know, mm. did, was that weird? And they're like, it kind of scared me. Yeah. And I was it like, scared yeah. Me. Oh gosh. Like, well yeah. that my intention was to protect you, but yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I wasn't setting a good example in that moment. And I don't want those moments to outweigh the positive moments mm-hmm. as, as me being a role model. I, tr- I try to think of something I, that I, I, I didn't realize when I was a kid, but my dad, my dad was six like six three, two hundred and you know, fifty, sixty, seventy pounds. I don't yeah. know, but it, like that is a huge human being to a seven year old. Like yeah. and you're a tall yeah. guy. Yeah. Like right. you're like so. If you get elevated and you're you don't think about that. Like as a mm. kid, that's a scary yeah. thing because you're yeah. you're a big dude. And so it's like it, they they see us at differently than we see us. We yeah. Yeah. so our kids aren't scared of us, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but I think that's <laughs> terrifying. You know, yeah. you modeled though, Bobby saying, hey, how did that make you guys feel? Well, it mm-hmm. scared us. And it gave you that opportunity because we said if nothing else, our kids are going to know how to apologize because we've had to do it so much. Because well, yeah. we're both high, strong, uh, strong personalities, my wife and I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we'll get, I I can get, you know, and I've learned to control it, but so many times I have to go back and go, I'm just, I'm so sorry. Well, yeah. and I think, so I think sorry. even in those moments, like even though you, you did, you maybe lost it, I think sometimes the, those things... I think God has a way of turning those things into like lessons mm. inside of lessons. Like he yeah. mm. taught two lessons. Hey, number one, we don't like that type of behavior. Yeah. And two, dad, dad overreacted, but he can for, he can be forgiven. Well, my exact like, words were sometimes you make mistakes. Right. Yeah. And dad made a mistake. And, you know, yes, what they were doing was wrong, but it was wrong for me to like yell at complete strangers who I'll never see again over yeah. a couple of words that, I could have just told you in the car, we don't say that. And just go home, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, you guys, you know, you, I can see see it and feel it, and I know the listeners feel the same way. You just got a heart for our baby girls, man. For sure. Yeah. I mean, they just, they just have our hearts. I mean, they just, our, our sons do too, but there's something about when you see her and you think, oh, you think about walking down the aisle or letting them go to college in a few I'm weeks. I'm not crying, you're crying. I'm not crying, you're crying. But I'm telling you what, just like, you talked about when you found out you were going to have a little girl, mm-hmm. 
it tapped into those emotions, right? I'm watching mine as she's about to step off to college. I have cried way more. And boys, if you're listening, you, you're not listening, sons. You're not listening. You don't listen to the podcast from me. But my sons, it was a different, it was a different thing uh, because I feel this protective part of her. I feel that part. Yeah. But there's just, guys, I know all you um, girl dads out there, you, we want to do this well. Uh, the fact that we're not girls ourselves make that difficult. Sometimes yeah. we're wired a little differently, but you're doing better than you think. Yeah. Uh, and what you're yeah. doing is important. What you're yeah, doing is important. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot that, hey, babe, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Dad's, dad's learning that it's just give a powerful Give yourself a lesson. break. Yeah. Give yourself yeah. a break. Well, you know what? We should say that on every episode. Yeah. Just yeah. give yourself a break. Let's get some Our t-shirts. Bottom line, yeah, get some t-shirts. <laughs> just give yourself a break. The bottom line for today, we always want to give you one of those, is your daughter needs you. Yep. So Absolutely. it's no more complicated than that. So what is our pro move, Bobby? What's our pro, pro move? Pro move, real simple this week. This week, focus on one of these seven needs for your daughter. I'll read the list one last time. She needs, number one, you to be involved. Number two, she needs you to demonstrate a healthy marriage. Number three, she needs you to support her. Number four, she needs you to trust you as a confidant. Number five, she needs your unconditional love. Number six, she needs you to be a strong spiritual leader. And number seven, she needs you to be a strong role model. Pick one of those this week and decide which one should get your attention. Yeah, just pick one. Don't yeah. don't, 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 yeah, freak don't try to be all seven. Yeah, don't, be, don't be the guy that signs up for the gym membership in January. And goes, <laughs> it's like, I'm going to do this every day. Every day. You're not. You're no, not going to do you're it. You're going to be too yeah. sore. Yeah, don't, don't do that at all. Yep. Well, you guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with me I always learn a lot from you guys absolutely and thanks for all you guys that listen today we hope this encourages you to continue to be an all pro dad thanks for listening to the all pro dad podcast all pro dad is the fatherhood program of the nonprofit family first along with our motherhood program i mom we exist to help you love your family well subscribe to our daily email the all pro dad play of the day by going to allprodad.com slash subscribe and get daily powerful and practical fatherhood tips in your inbox the all pro dad podcast is hosted by me ted Lowe, produced by bobby lewis